Hey guys and welcome back to another Ranch and Force tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create a one-way platform for any type of game. So right now I'm in the side scroller template, so this is a 2.5D side scroller, however this will work in normal 2D, 2.5D or even 3D. Base concept of it will be the exact same. So let me show you what we're going to make. So you can see we have two platforms here, go over here, we jump up, we're going to go through and land on top. If I press S or control, we're going to go back through. And the same works over here just to show you that it works on however many we have in here. So you'll see these very often in different platform games, most famously obviously Mario, where you can jump through the bottom of the platform and land on top to walk around, and you can fall back through like this. So this is what we're making today, it's quite a cool little concept, so let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So what we want to do first is we want to create our blueprint for our one-way platform. So I'm going to right click, go to blueprint class, create an actor, and I'm going to name this one one-way platform BP, obviously you can name it just platform BP or anything like that. I'm going to open it up straight away. In here I'm going to add a component and I'm just going to add a cube and again you can put this whatever you want so if you have a static mesh which you'd want for this you can put that in there as well. I'm just going to make it a little bit thinner and a little bit longer. So this is the platform that I'm going to be using. Once I've got the platform I'm going to add another component this one being a box collision. Move it so it's just underneath like that and scale up to be the same size. So we have it the same size and underneath it like this. So if I just turn off the snapping for scaling and do that. And then I'm going to rename this box collision to be called underneath as this is underneath our platform like so. And I'm going to duplicate that. So select it, control C, control V, and I'll name this one above. And obviously I'm going to drag it to be above the platform. And so we're going to be using box collisions to tell whether or not the player is above or below the platform so whether they can jump through or fall back down. So if we compile and save this, we can go to the event graph. So go to the event graph, delete these three events, and I'm going to right click on the underneath box collision, and add event, add on component begin overlap. I'm going to right click on it again, add event, add on component end overlap. The other actor of these we want to cast to our character, which for me is the side scroller character. So if you use could be first, third, side scroller character, or whatever you've named it. And this is just because we want to check to see if it is our character which is overlapping. So we're going to do that out of the other actor for both of these, like so. And very simply, after this, all we want to do is get a reference to our cube here, which is our platform. And out of this, we're going to set collision enabled. Connecting that in there, and this top one is going to be no collision. We'll get it again down here with the target as the cube, with this one as collision enabled. And it's that simple. So now if we're underneath it, the collision is going to be disabled so we can jump up and then when we leave it, hence not being underneath it anymore, the collision will be re-enabled so we can go straight back onto it again. So that is going to work for jumping up. So if we select it, hit C to comment it, we can name this one jump up through platform. And now let's do going back down underneath it. So if that's what you want to do, so you don't want to be able to go back through, you only want to go up through it, you can just have this. However, if you want to press S or control to go back down again, you can do this part as well. So if we right click on the above box collision, add event, add a component begin overlap, right click, add event, add a component end overlap, we can now do something similar. So again, the other actor is going to be cast to our character, which again for me is the side scroller character, like so for both of these down here. And then after this, what I also want to do is enable the input. So I'm going to right click and get the player controller not control from ID, just player controller like that and out of this well, I'm just going to right click and enable input the player controller is get player controller and the target as self that goes into the begin overlap then I right click and get disable input go into the end overlap with again the target self player controller as get player controller now I'm going to just move this down a bit I'm going to hold down G and left click to get a gate with the open being the enable input and the close being disable input and the enter, we want to have the key which we want to use to go down. So I'm going to create an action and mapping. So I'm going to go to edit, project settings. And once it loads, I'm going to go down to input down here, open the action mappings and hit plus action mapping. And I'm going to name this one fall through platform. Now you might have a different, better name. You choose whatever you want. I'm going to set this to be the S keyboard event here and also the control keyboard event. So as you can see, I can have multiple buttons. So the benefit of action mappings is you can have multiple buttons as you see here, keys for different consoles, and we can also set up key bindings. So I have S and left control. And we can close that, 
Now if we right click, we can search what we named it. Mine was fall through platform and pressed, we're going to enter there. So then when we press that button, we're going to go into the gate if we've entered the correct box collision. And now if exit, all we're going to do is simply, again, disable the collision. So we get a reference to the cube and simply disable collision there, or set collision enabled, sorry, and then no collision like so. And now that will work perfectly as well. And we don't need to re-enable the collision because that will happen when we pass through it here. So then when we fall underneath it, what's going to happen is when we go into this box collision and leave it, the collision will be re-enabled again. So now if we compile and save, this should work perfectly. So once again, I'm going to select this, hit C to comment it, and I'm going to name it fall through platform on button press. And also one thing I've just remembered as well is if we select the input action, we need to untick consume input. And that means we can have multiple instances of this blueprint in the level and have it still working. So we compile and save that. Let's put two of these in and show you how it works. So I'll put one in, rotate it and position it to be where I want it to be. And I'll put another one over here as well. And I might just make it a little bit bigger like that. So if we hit play, we can see this should be working. So if I move over here, I'm underneath, nothing's happening. If I jump up, we go through. And if I hold S, we go back down. I'll just press S, sorry. So these look a little bit slim as well. So I'll just make them a little bit wider. Just make it look better. And there we go. So again, I can jump up through this one as well. If I press S, we go back down. I can go up to this one. We land on top. If I press Control, we also go back down as well. So I might lower them a bit again, just because it looks a bit better with the player's jump height. So if I do this, and again, as you see, this works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video. If we don't have anything we want to do, we've created this one-way platforms in which we can jump up through the bottom of them and then fall back down through the top of them by simply just enabling and disabling the collision based on box collisions. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.